Uh, good morning and welcome as you are joining us for this virtual worship service of the Gathering Church. I want to say good morning, good morning, and welcome and welcome. It's good to see uh, so many familiar faces here hopping on. I got Miguel and Helen looking sharp there. I uh, got some family members, got the Crumps, got Carlos jumping on. I see Eric and Leandra Ganko and the Files, Courtney Graham. It's good to see everybody. Good to see these familiar faces. Good to see you as you're joining in with us. As we normally do, we offer up this time of our worship service uh, with an introduction and a welcome. My name is Kurt Lowndes. I'm the pastor here at the Gathering Church. We're so thankful that you're joining us in worship today. Just a few notes this morning as we kind of go through this hallway time, which is sort of our, um, our reach back to when we would meet at Creekside Elementary School and we would gather in the hallway before service with pastries and coffee, uh, greet one another, welcome one another, catch up a little bit. So we'll do, uh, we have some time here where it's good to just kind of look through, put it on gallery view and see who all is joining in worship this morning. And then um, just to be reminded that you can use gallery view, uh, speaker view, it works great when um, during the sermon or Lee is leading or Jessica is speaking so that you can see who's there and, and join us when we share the screen for scripture passages or readings together. And just a reminder that Charles Cleaver will be sharing his screen with you at certain points throughout the service to uh, share parts of the service that you can participate in. And so that'll be to see song lyrics or um, sweet graphic for our new sermon series like is up right now, um, or ways for you to participate in readings throughout that. And so uh, thanks to Charles for doing that this morning. And we do that because we think that worship is something you participate in. It's something you're doing with us. You're not just sitting back and watching professionals do it. It's something we all do together. If you're new with us or uh, visiting or haven't been in a bit, uh, we're worshiping via Zoom, as you can tell. And we here at the Gathering Church, though, whether we're meeting virtually or in person or in small groups, home groups, our mission is to love others incredibly well as Jesus did. We believe that God has brought us together as a people and is continuing to bring in people and to form and to shape us into a loving community that reaches out with love because God's love is overflowing in our lives. Uh, we want to say uh, welcome. We hope that you experience that love this morning, whether you're new or you've been coming for a long time. Also, in a moment, if you have a candle, you can grab a candle because we like to light a candle at the beginning of every worship service. And then also, if you have um, communion elements, so if you have bread and wine, that's great. If you have bread and water, good news, Jesus turned water into wine at a wedding. Uh, so there are a number of ways that you can make um, communion and, and participate in communion and make it happen this morning. So we're uh, concerned more about you being part of that meal and that fellowship meal with us, rather than being real concerned with the specifics of what you have to offer, because God takes what we have to give and uses it. As we've been saying already this morning, it's really good to see everyone. Welcome. My name's Kurt Lowndes. I'm the pastor here at the Gathering Church. We're so thankful to see everybody hopping on this morning, joining us in worship in this way. Um, as I've mentioned, we're um, a couple things that we like to do as we begin our worship service each and every week. One of them is we like to light a candle together. And we do this each week so that we're reminded that um, Christ is the light of the world and Christ has called us to be light. So if you have a candle or um, something like that, Whatever you've got available to you, I'd encourage you now to light a candle. As we invite God into our midst this morning, as we welcome God into worship with us. Each week, we also begin our worship service by pausing, by taking a moment and doing our best to be still, to focus all of who we are 
whether you've got children running around with you or you're home physically alone or you're with family, we want to do our best to focus all of who we are into our worship this morning to bring everything we have, the baggage that we're bringing with us, the good and the bad, because God wants it all. So I'd invite you to take a deep breath this morning. To slow down a little bit. To invite the spirit of the living God into the space with you. And to be reminded that you've been called and claimed by God. I'd ask now that you join me in prayer. And this prayer this morning is based off the prayer of St. Francis. So join me this morning. Draw us into your love, O Christ Jesus, and deliver us from fear. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us bring love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O oh, divine master, grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. At this time, Lee, will you lead us in our first worship song as we use our voices and our bodies uh, to worship God this morning? Yeah, good morning, everybody. Let's sing together. Pass us not a gentle Savior.
do not pass us by. Amen. Thank you, Lee, for leading us in that way. As we've mentioned, we believe that worship is participation, and so now we're going to get an opportunity for us to worship together. Um, we're going to pray through and read some of the divine hours, and just as a reminder, that's a collection from the Psalms. Mostly there are some prayers written in there as well, but we do this so that we can all participate in worship together. Steve Eford is going to lead us this morning in reading and praying through these divine hours, and we'd encourage you to join in in the parts that are underlined. Uh, even though you're muted, it's a reminder that you are, are worshiping God. We're not doing it just for the sake of being heard by someone else, that we are here for, for worship with one another and with God. So Steve, will you lead us this morning? The call to prayer. I will sing of mercy and justice. To you, O Lord, will I sing praises. Psalm 101.1. The request for presence. But as for me, O Lord, I cry to you for help. In the morning, my prayer comes before you. Psalm 88.14. The greeting. Your testimonies are very sure, and holiness adorns your house, O Lord, forever and forevermore. Psalm 93, 6. Refrain. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Psalm 118, 23. The Morning Psalm. Your praise, like your name, O God, reaches to the world's end. Your right hand is full of justice. Let Mount Zion be glad, and the cities of Judah rejoice because of your judgments. Make the circuit of Zion. Walk round about her. Count the number of her towers. Consider well her bulwarks. Examine her strongholds that you may tell those who come after. This God is our God forever and ever. He shall be our guide forevermore. Psalm 48, 9 through 13. Refrain. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Psalm 118, 23. Prayer appointed for the weak. O oh God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule my heart. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit on God now and forever. Amen. And now the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Steve, and everyone for joining us in prayer and, and in reading this morning. Now we're going to hear from Jessica Nyman, our Kids and Youth Director. Uh, Jessica, what do you have for us today? Good morning. It is so good to see you all. I see Carter, and I see the Close crew. Um, it is so good to see you all. I'm sure there's more, but I'm not going to mess with my computer too much or I'll mess it up. So... This morning, I want you to imagine with me, kids. Imagine that you take a big bite into an apple. Oh, and it tastes really bad. Oh, it's bitter or there's a bruise spot on it. Oh, it's no good. It's yucky. Now imagine biting into an apple and it's crisp and juicy. Oh, and it's so sweet. It's so good. That's really good fruit and it tastes wonderful. Now, we hear a lot of stories about Jesus, right? And Jesus, I love his stories. He tells the best stories. He talks about trees and birds and fruit. Isn't that so cool? They're beautiful, simple, ordinary, everyday stories. And you know what? He's showing us what the kingdom of God is like and how we can learn to live a life with God in the kingdom right now. 
and it's really, 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 really good. Right, Carter? So good. So, um, so Jesus talked about living life with him. So life with him, abiding. We're going to be talking about the word abide, and that just means with. And so we can live with the Father and with the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will help us produce this good fruit, just like that apple we took that bite into this morning. We imagine it was so good and juicy. So next thing, Edith's with me, I want you to pretend to be a tree. Carter and close family, can you pretend to be a tree with big branches? So stretch out your arms real wide. You're a big tree. Oh, I love how, look at those big trees. Yes! Now, I want you to put your hands up towards the sky and pray this with me. Okay. God, give us your Holy Spirit today. Your good spirit. May we receive your good spirit and help us to live into the power and goodness of your spirit today. Amen. Love that. So good. So today we're going to sing a song with Lee. He's going to lead us and we're going to, we're going to be talking about the fruits of this spirit. Hmm. So I want you to listen closely to listen. Well, what are these fruits of the spirit? And something that you can do, if you have a handy, we have some fruit. So if you want to go grab some fruit, we have a mango, we have a pear, apple, whatever you have handy, you can go grab that fruit and you can sing. And it's amazing. Good fruit. And it's delicious. It's good for you. And as you're listening to Lee sing, I want you to listen for what those fruits of the spirit are. And if it's, if it's not too much for your parents, I would love for them to just, you shout it out and your parents can type it in the chat feature, what you say, what you think, what you hear the fruits of the spirit. What are they? Okay, so grab your fruit, listening ears, and sing out what are the fruits of the Spirit, and Lee will lead us. Thanks, Jessica. So good. All right, y'all. This is a song that um, some of our friends from our community partner, Reality Ministries, um, we were in a, I was in a songwriting group with, with some friends from Reality, and we, um, we put the fruit of the spirit to a, the tune of a song called "Buffalo Soldier" by Bob Marley, and I've I've, I've sung it with y'all before. See if you see if you remember. It. it goes like this. So there's kind of a call and response part to it. So um, I'm by myself right now, so I can't really do the echo. But y'all can maybe kind of if you're with other people, some of y'all can sing one part, some of you can kind of sing it back and forth to each other. Um, but it goes like this. You ready? Goes like the fruits are love, joy, peace, love, joy, peace, patience and kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Sing that again. The fruits are love, joy, peace, love, joy, peace, patience and kindness. self-control and then the next part goes like all of them are important and needed for a good life they taste sweet and so right growing on the true vine the fruits I love joy peace joy peace patience and I love joy, peace, love joy, peace, patience and kindness, patience and kindness, goodness, faithfulness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All of them, all of them are important. They need it for a good life. They taste sweet and so the fruits one more time the fruits are love joy peace love joy peace 
patience and kindness, patience and kindness, goodness, faithfulness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. All of them, all of them are important and needful a good life. It tastes sweet and so right. Growing on the true vine. Here we go. you're confused if joy is one of the fruit of the spirit let me clear it up for you it is uh and you can see it in our children and in lee but i'm not gonna lie i also saw it in a lot of y'all out there which makes me uh joy filled um to be with you and to worship with you in this way and to be reminded that regardless of what is happening in our lives or in the world uh, the god of peace and joy and love is with us so thank you, Lee, for modeling that for us this morning. At this time, we are going to practice a little bit of that. If we were at Creekside at this point in the service, we would um, send our kids off to their classes and then we would share signs of peace with one another. Handshakes, hugs, welcome, we greet one another, that kind of thing. We're not together and we're not able to do that. So instead, we use breakout rooms over Zoom and you automatically get broken up into these rooms. You'll get sort of an invitation asking you to join the room and then uh, we'll unmute everyone so that you can speak and share. And what we do is when you get into this room, we ask that you introduce yourself. Uh, just, it's a good practice, even if you think you know everybody in there. And we have you uh, respond to a prompt each week. And sometimes they're a bit more serious maybe, sometimes pretty lighthearted. If you haven't noticed, we're talking about fruit of the spirit this morning, and we will be for the next few weeks. So today's prompt for our breakout rooms uh, uh, is, do you have a green thumb? Do you have, so personally, no. I don't even have like a, a I don't know what a borderline green thumb would be, but I'm not even there. It's just, it's not there. I, I don't have it. I kind of wish I did. So you can respond with, do you have it? Do you have a garden? Did you grow up on a farm? Do you love to grow things, house plants even? Or are you kind of like, mm, that's for other people. I'm really glad they have it, but I don't need it. Um, so what will happen is we'll unmute everybody. You'll be invited to go into this breakout room. And then in about three and a half minutes or so, you will come back into um, this room with all of us together. So I'm going to unmute everyone right now. And then you can uh, join in with these breakout rooms. So here we go. Another we're uh, incredibly grateful for the ways that we continue to build community even in the midst of some physical distance and and maybe worship that's not ideal um and there are a number of things that we miss out on right i mean i'm looking at um amy and daniel jones's tile baby chet's there like how many of us would not love to be able to i mean not too but we don't want you breathing all over him or anything but to be able to be close to him and see him in person that'd be such a gift so um, while we miss one another, we are grateful for the ability to gather in worship and to continue to build community in different ways. So thank you for that. Now, Lee, why don't you lead us in our next song? Are the vineyard you have planted Tend our leaves and wild branches We 
abide, we abide. We abide, we abide. Through growing from our strength and labor, rain on us with grace and favor. We abide. today that we might abide in God and that God might abide in us. Our scripture passage for this morning is next and uh, Steve Eford is going to to read that passage for us as we listen and, and allow God's word to soak deep into our hearts and into who we are so that we can allow God's word to abide in us. So Steve, will you uh, lead us in that way this morning? Sure. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love, for the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out, or you will be destroyed by each other. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, 
that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Join me in prayer this morning. Holy Spirit, be with us. Dwell within us. Open us up so that we might receive who you are. So we might grow into who you have called us to be and who you are creating us to be. Remind us that we can't force ourselves into this. But this is about grace. Be with us this morning. Speak to all of us and through us to one another and to our neighbors and our co-workers and our family members. May we be people who walk in step with you. People who live by the Spirit. We pray all this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we're talking about the fruit of the Spirit and the tendency, and, and I do this, is to sort of jump straight to the fruit. And we can do it, I did it in my video on Thursday where it's like, oh, love, yes, we, we definitely want more of that and joy and peace. We want these things in the world. Or you can also be like me at times, which is I'll jump to the fruit of the Spirit and I begin the sort of checklist or analysis of my life love. Let's see, how am I doing? Pretty loving these days? Yeah, I mean, you know, it could be better. Joy uh, depends on how things are going, and we can work our way through that list and sort of do this um, kind of spiritual checkup or see how we're measuring on this balance sheet. That's a mistake. Let me just stop you right there. If that's where your brain went or your heart went, when we were thinking and when we're talking about fruit of the Spirit. Instead, I want you to focus today and, and even as we move forward on the Spirit. This is part of why we call this series Life on the Vine and the Spirit's Fruit. So the, the goal is not to just focus and hone in on these nine, fruit, the fruit of the Spirit, these nine virtues or, or characteristics of the fruit, so that we can learn a lot of information about what it means to look like loving or joyful people. No, no, no. Our goal is to, to live life on the vine, to be connected and, and tied in with Jesus by the power of the Spirit so that we are living more fruitful lives, more lives filled with fruit. So to illustrate a little bit about what that looks like or might look like, a way to think about it is um, about a week or so ago, my family, we went on a hike. And in the beginning, it's pretty level and you just sort of work your way into the hike. Um, my two daughters, Eloise and Olive, they're fine. They're doing their thing at the beginning. We're excited. It's great. And as you go along, it begins to get harder and uh, the terrain becomes a bit more treacherous and difficult to navigate at times. But there are these little pockets of streams or um, places where you can play and enjoy life and we're having fun. It's a blast. And But we get near the top. We're going up to a waterfall. And it begins to be really difficult to navigate some of these spots. And so what would happen is myself or Jenny or, or even uh, my brother-in-law, we would be leading the way and the girls would then put their feet right where our feet had just been. So they're following in our footsteps so that they can maintain traction and they know where to step safely so that they don't get hurt and so that they can continue on this path. But at times there are spots where they're just not tall enough or strong enough to do this. And so it requires one of us to kind of reach down, just grab them up, pick them up, and plant them up on the next level, or to pick them out of something and put them into some other safe place. That's how I've been thinking about what it looks like to live in step with the Spirit, to live with the Spirit this week. And, and I've been thinking about this series for a long time 
because there are times where, where we need those who've gone before and we need um, to see members in our community who can show us some of the steps they've taken. And we also need Jesus to show us this is the way. And so we'll be looking at these uh, manifestations of the fruit in Jesus' life each and every week. But there are also times where I just need to be picked up from where I am and placed at the next spot. I just need the grace and the strength of God to lift me up and place me here. It is not just about me hiking and striving and being strenuous and making it to this place of fruitfulness in my life. The goal instead is to follow, to live in step with God's spirit, where God leads us and, and draws us and takes us up to this beautiful, magnificent, life-giving place. I want to say a word first, kind of before we jump too deep into this, why we're talking about the fruit of the spirit. Why do we need this series? Well, we need this series because we need the fruit of the spirit, um, in this cultural moment that we're in right now, I can think of nothing else better for us to be discovering and uncovering, for us to be growing into than the fruit of the Spirit. And I say this from a personal place. I need this. I've never preached on the fruit of the Spirit. I didn't write a paper about the fruit of the Spirit in Div school. I haven't taken a class on the fruit of the Spirit. I just need to learn this with you. We need to follow in step with the Spirit because I want this fruit in my life. I, I want to see more of it. And my hunch is that you do too. And in our conversations, I've seen it and heard it from you, this desire. Part of it is due to the fact that we've been living in this pandemic and it has affected us, to say the least. Um, we, in many ways, have been surviving. We've all been doing what we can in a number of ways to just keep going. And there are times where, where we need to do that, and you just kind of hunker down, and you put one foot in front of the other, and you ask for God to give you what you need to make it to that next step. But that's not a great way to live long term. We want to move from sort of surviving to thriving. I think it's time for us to step back a bit, to not be moving so quickly and to sort of we've jumped from kind of the pandemic and school went down in the summer and we were trying to figure out, we thought it would get better and it didn't. And now school is happening at home for almost all of us and it's, it's beginning to wear us down. I was thinking about this sort of move from surviving to thriving and I thought about the movie 12 Years a Slave. It's a fantastic movie. Um, and it's about Solomon Northup and his story. He uh, was a, a free man who uh, wrote this, um, his story down, how he was kidnapped and enslaved. He was a black man living in the North, kidnapped and brought down to the South to live and uh, enslaved by some um, folks, some white folks owning a plantation. So he's talking with some of his other um, uh, brothers in this kind of moment in this movie and they're telling him look it doesn't matter that you were a free man what matters right now is you just need to survive you just need to keep your head down don't tell anybody your story and survive and it gets to this moment where he says I don't want to survive I want to live He'd experienced life and what freedom looked like, and he didn't want to just sort of survive through enslavement. The goal was to live, to be free. I think that's a picture of what we all want as human beings, and we see it in physical ways. We see it in our mental health and our emotional health. We see it in our spiritual lives. We want to thrive. We want to not just survive, but to live. And, and I want this for our church. I, I want us to be a community of people, of fruit-bearing trees, of an orchard, if you will, where we're this connected family of trees growing together in the fruit of the Spirit um, with our lives that are lived by one another in this time and place. And I want that because I believe that not only do we need it, but our neighbors need it, your coworkers need it, your family members need it, our broader community needs it, our nation needs it. 
I don't know if you've um, maybe been living under a rock and haven't noticed the deep divide and partisanship right now that's at play in our nation. Uh, we have an election coming up and it does seem that every new election, it becomes even more divisive um, and it begins to, we kind of just repeat the same thing that we said in the previous election, a national election especially, is that, oh, this is the worst it's been. We're sort of hurtling down this path where we just continue to be even more deeply divided and more divisive and, and partisan in the way we approach the world. And I've been thinking about this because the book of Galatians, the letter that Paul writes to the people of Galatia, where this fruit of the spirit passage is from, they were a deeply divided community. There were factions and, and uh, partisanship was happening there. Verse 15, I don't know if you heard it, but Paul's talking about this fruit of the spirit. And he says, um, if you bite and devour each other, Watch out or you'll be destroyed by each other. You'll be consumed by each other. Their, their division, they were devouring one another. That feels like what's happening in our world right now. We, we are getting really good at devouring one another. Now, the goal is not to just sort of get along to get along so that we can have sort of the absence of conflict and we can all pretend like it's okay. No, the joy is true or the goal is true peace which is the presence of shalom, of wholeness, of healthy lifestyles for all of our people. And so we notice the lack of fruit or the absence of the fruit of the Spirit in our own lives, in our world, in our nation, in our neighborhood. Um, and, and the temptation in, in this world is to get sucked into these other vines, to connect to this other way of doing life that will fuel some of that hatred that anger, that envy, any of those other uh, works of the flesh that Paul talks about, these, um, these things that cause us to not live our best lives. And the reason I think that we're called to live these lives, we, we see it in our title for today. It's the Spirit's fruit for the church and the world. We live these lives by the Spirit because this is for the world. It's not just for us. There is something magnetic, something attractive about the fruit of the Spirit. People want more love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. As Paul says, against such things, there is no law. People want this. People will be drawn to us as a people of faith if we can live by the Spirit. And, and I was, um, I imagined this with the help, actually. I'm, I'm glad that Steve Eford was our reader today. They have a son, a four-year-old son named Carter. Many of you see him, you know, on Zoom at times. Carter loves trains. And we were having a Zoom call with the Efords. It was after a, a church meeting one night. And um, Carter was on with two of his trains. And they're those little trains that, you know, I grew up with, and maybe some of you did as well, that have the magnets on either side and they connect in this long train. Well, uh, Carter was showing off two of these cookie cutters, two cookie cutter shapes. Uh, one was in the shape of a shark and one was a shark fin because my youngest daughter, Olive, loves sharks. She is passionate, as passionate about sharks as Carter is about trains. Well, these are metal cookie cutters. And um, Carter, put together, he had a train and then the metal cookie cutter and then another train and a metal cookie cutter. They were magnetically attracted and it was kind of coming along and he was moving this whole train along. That to me is, is a picture of what we hope happens. God is the engine and the caboose of this train and we are all being drawn in. We're, we're magnetically attracted to the fruit of the spirit. We want it, we crave it, and others do as well. And they will join in on this if we're known by our fruit, as Jesus says. Because oftentimes the, the church, unfortunately, is, is not known by its fruit, but it's known by its legalistic pursuit of things. Either it's kind of harsh, strict adherence to living in a certain way, and we pick and choose certain ones of those works of the flesh, 
generally the ones revolving around uh, drunkenness or acts uh, or in, like sexual um, sins that we want to highlight as the church. And we forget to, to look at the big picture of life with God. And so we're known for the things that we're against instead of the things that we're for and creating in our world. I don't know about you, but I grew up with little um, candy fruit called runts. There are these little just pure sugar and they're hard as a rock, uh, but they were delicious. Um, and, and they would just break your teeth to pieces. And when I think about those little runts versus real fruit, those runts, they're not nourishing to ourselves or to others. It's a quick fix and a sugar high. We want real fruit that nourishes and gives life to us and to others. That's what we want to offer. That's what God is offering to us and to our neighbors is this real, sweet, delicious fruit that gives us life, that gives us energy and joy. And one other uh, note about this fruit is that it is fruit of the Spirit, not fruits of the Spirit. So think about it as one fruit that has many descriptors or virtues or flavors of fruit. Uh, this is not a, a fruit buffet. There are not nine choices and you get to pick and choose. I'll have some love. I'm pretty good at joy. I'll, I'll just go with joy. Self-control, we'll leave that over there for someone else who's gifted at that. No, no, no. This is one fruit that's growing all of these different uh, virtues in our lives. The emphasis on spirit is really important here because it's what's going to tie us into life with God. And Paul kind of paints this picture of flesh versus spirit. And, and before we get too deep into the series, we just need to name that, that for Paul, the word flesh does not mean your physical body over against your spiritual body. No, no, no. In Paul's world, spiritual is everything. There is a cosmic battle that's happening between the forces of, of God, good, and life, and then the forces of sin and death and evil. And so flesh refers to the power of sin and death and these forces uh, that live in opposition to the Spirit. And we feel it in our own lives. We experience that individually and as a communal, uh, as a community. Spirit is, is not just some sort of ghostly, ephemeral thing. It's who we are under redemption. Spirit is, is who we've been um, created to be as we live in step with God. Our, our whole existence is spiritual. It's about the new creation that is happening in our world. And so our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Because we can be tempted to think that those people over there, whoever those people are, are the enemy. Don't believe that lie. Those people are not the enemy principalities and powers. We're working against the powers of sin and death. And, and those principalities and powers, they show up and they play out in our lives. And so uh, we've talked a lot about race in this country lately. Racism is a principality and a power. It's one that I am battling in my own life because I live in a culture that is conditioned and trained me to think of a certain view of a person as the best and the ultimate and that person generally has looked like me. And so I'm battling against this principality and against this power. And the fruit of the Spirit is what will lead me into developing a more healthy view of God's world, into living into alignment with this. So it's, um, it's good to think about it as, as though like the way of Jesus is this way of freedom and of life and of the fruit of the Spirit. And to either side, you can kind of veer off into indulgence, which is freedom. We love freedom. Do whatever you want. You don't have to worry about the law or kind of duty and obligation on the other side where we, we fall into this sort of religious leader response of check marks and making sure that legalism is happening and everyone's paying attention and doing what they're supposed to be doing. But that's not the freedom that God offers. We were just in the book of Exodus, and there you see it. It's freedom from the system of Pharaoh, the system of death, 
And it's freedom for life with God, for serving the Lord and serving one another and serving our neighbors. That's sort of the the deliverance from the power of sin and death into life of love and joy and peace and ongoing with God. So today is just an overview of this. Uh, idea of the fruit of the Spirit. And we're going to dig into each sort of descriptor of this fruit as we go through for nine weeks. And it's going to carry us into the fall because I think we're going to need reminding of these fruit as we go. And I want to close with just this idea sort of of um, our role in this. So the question is, how do we produce fruit? I want more peace. I want more kindness. I want more gentleness in my life. How do we produce more fruit? We don't. God does. God is the one who is going to grow this fruit in our lives. The goal is to be connected and united to the Spirit, not to try harder. So if you find yourself in this moment or or as we go through this series thinking that you need to do more or try harder to be loving or patient or kind, that is not it. This is a gift. It has been given by God. This is new creation. God has made us new and fruit is going to grow and be produced in our lives because God is going to do it. That is the grace of this life. It is not works of righteousness, as Paul talks about in Galatians. This is fruit that is given and grows. You think about the farmer or the gardener. We can prepare the land. We can plant seed. But we don't have any control over if the sun shines or the rain falls or what weather patterns move through. This is all gift and grace from God. We do have a bit of a role to play, though. That's why Paul says uh, those sort of verbs and actions of uh, walk by the Spirit, follow the Spirit, keep in step with the Spirit. As I mentioned, that view of the hike. It's this idea that we're living in step with God's Holy Spirit so we can abide, we can dwell, we can stay with God, we can make our home with God. Jesus says, I'm the vine, you are the branches. Abide in me and you will bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. And so we can tend and cultivate this fruit. We can work, we can prepare the ground. There is a role that we have to, to play, to abide with God, to, um, to, to be a co-creator and a co-laborer with God, but we're ultimately not causing the fruit to grow. That is a gift from God, and it's going to take some time. It's not as though in nine weeks you'll suddenly be this uh, wonderful picture of love and joy and peace and gentleness and on and on and on. No, we're in this for the long haul. It's best to think of it like cultivating a friendship. It's going to last a lifetime, and it will take some time dwelling together. Just as a friendship, you you spend time with one another. This is going to take some time for us to be with God, with the Spirit, God's presence living among us, like we talked about through Exodus and into the discussion on Sabbath, which is where God makes God's home with us and among us. So our goal in this series is not to give you more information about the fruit. It's to help us... um, It's to help us prepare the soil and the land so that fruit can grow among us, so that we can be transformed by God's Spirit, because the fruit show us who God is and who we can become. This is the beauty of it. This is the extraordinary truth, the good news that we mark our lives by, is that we can become like Jesus. We can become like God. We can be transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. We can bring about good fruit because of what God is doing in our lives. I hope that you hear the good news in this, the good news that God wants to produce and is already producing good fruit in your life. Join me in prayer. God, may we be reminded that you are the beginning and the end, that you take the first step and the last step, that your grace and mercy abound. 
that you loved us before we knew what love was or what it looked like, that you were willing to be with us um, when we didn't understand any of who you are and that you have patiently and lovingly brought us along. God, may we dwell in you. May we rest in your spirit. May we make our home with you. God, thank you that you want to grow fruit in us, that you want us to be fruit-bearing trees, and that it's not about us trying to be more loving. It's about us being connected to you, the one who is love. God, may we abide in you as you abide in us. And we pray all this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. everyone. Um, before we come to the table with Jesus and each other, I would like to share a brief testimony about my own experience with the fruit of the Spirit. It's how I met Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Many years ago at a Bible study I attended, we studied Paul's letter to the Galatians, and we started with the fruit of the Spirit. When I first read them, I thought, yes, this is what I want in my life. I knew that I had to be Christ and Spirit led to know what the fruit could truly mean in my life. My only problem was is that I didn't know who the Holy Spirit or Jesus was. So right before my 40th birthday, as we were studying the fruit, I decided to trust Jesus as my Savior. And I guess you would say that since then, I've been wanting to live by this fruit of the Spirit and that it has become part of my spiritual formation. The Spirit sent me on a journey to learn to control my temper, as well as a journey to control the negative and prideful thoughts about myself. Still working on that. But most of all, the Spirit sent me on a journey to learn about the fruit of joy. Joy has been the hardest for me. Maybe because I have experienced so much depression over the last 20 years. Somewhere along the road, I came up with this strange belief that suffering and joy were mutually exclusive. Like if I felt joy, then I was negating the suffering in the world. I felt guilty feeling joy. And if I was suffering through something, how could I feel joy? Confusing, right? Then a few years ago, as I reached a place of deep despair, I followed that awful time. Fortunately, the old Holy Spirit led me through a time of great healing. He helped me understand and accept the joy and suffering are both and, not either or. Now I know that it is okay to experience joy, even in the midst of suffering, and not feel guilty. This was eye-opening and freeing. I decided to follow my role model on this. Who knew how best to experience great joy, even in the midst of great suffering, than Jesus? Thanks to the Spirit and God's grace, I have learned to find joy even in the smallest of things. That's why I love to blow bubbles so much. I am grateful that the study of the fruit of the Spirit led me to trust Jesus, because I now know that once we trust in Him, he never distances himself from us, even if we may distance ourselves from him. As we've already learned today, we become branches on his vine. And as we abide in him and he in us, we will bear much fruit. So now please come to the table with me and with Jesus. Bring whatever elements you have, crackers or bread, wine or water, if you are by yourself, know that you are absolutely not alone. Jesus shares your space with you. He promises to be by your side always. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you. Shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink this, 
do this in remembrance of me. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes. Will you pray with me? Mighty God, we are so grateful because you who hold the universe together hold us. And these weird, crazy, unprecedented times help us to remain in you as you remain in us. Help us to bear your good fruit of love, peace, joy, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. For we pray it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Take, eat. This is Christ's body broken for you. Take, drink. This is Christ's blood shed for you.
Amen. Thank you, Laura and Lee, for leading us um, to surrender to the goodness of God and to find joy there. One of the other parts of how we worship is through uh, giving. We believe that God is a generous God and we have been made in God's image. And we see giving not just as something that happens with your finances or money. That's a part of it. But it's about being generous with our entire lives. We thank you. We believe that generosity and gratitude go hand in hand. And so we say thank you for those of you who have supported and can continue to support the work of the church financially. We're grateful for that because it also means that we're able to reach out to love and to serve our neighbors to continue to cultivate relationships and friendships in our community so that we can um, build and help, um, yeah, help, help bring about God's kingdom here on earth because God is doing that work and we want to join in with it. So thank you for the ways uh, that you continue to give, not just financially, but with all of your lives. Uh, this morning, in terms of announcements, I'm going to throw a number of things into the chat box. So if you've been using the chat feature, you'll see all those uh, come up. And there are so many ways that you can um, stay connected and get involved right now. Um, one of the, the main ways is to um, sign up for our weekly email. That's the best way to find all the information in one spot. It comes out on Thursdays and it has all these links and a number of other things so that you know what's happening and the best way to stay connected is right there in one spot. Um, one of the ways that we use the, the funds that come in, a portion of those funds is they go into our COVID-19 support fund. Thank you again for your generosity. We are continuing to be able to give. And I'm really excited because I've been, I'm still hinting at this, but I've been hinting at this. Um, there's a way that we're going to serve some Creekside families and students directly because of your generosity in this way to um, help enable some uh, access to equitable learning environments for students in our Creekside community. That So thank you for your generosity in that way. At the same time, if you need support or know of someone who needs support, you should definitely check out the COVID-19 support page because that's going to help um, uh, give you information about if you want to pass that along to someone, if you need to request assistance, or if you want to offer it up in other ways. Um, Jessica, do you want to say a word about our uh, prayer partner initiative that we've got going on here coming up in the fall? I didn't um, prep to ask Jessica if she wanted to do this. So I'm, I'm doing it on the fly right now. So Jessica, do you want to say a word about that? <laughs> you know what my husband just did? He's like, oh, he's all about lighting. So he just threw a flashlight on my face. So you guys have no idea what happens at my house. <laughs> Sure. Um, the prayer partner kickoff, um, we are starting that now. So um, you can go to our email, you can click on that. And it's a way of connecting household to household. So we did like a prayer partner thing last fall with our teens and, and connected them with people in our church. This year, I'm envisioning all the church. So I would love to have like Say the Hongs, I see you. I'm like the Hongs. If the Hongs and our family were prayer partners, like our kids would connect um, in some way, we could pray for each other. I just, more than ever, I feel like we need to connect household to household. So you don't have to have kids. Everybody can sign up. I'd love our families just to connect, to welcome each other, nurture, encourage one another. So you can sign up and we will get you connected with a family within the church. I think it'd be wonderful. Thanks, Jessica. Uh, that's so good. Um, and yeah, the idea is it, this is about household. So whether you're single or your kids are grown or you have young kids like the Nymans, um, we want you to be part of this. This is one of the ways that we're continuing to seek to build community and fellowship during this time. Some of the other ways that we're doing that is uh, our Zoom groups that we have mentioned and they're in the weekly email. The links are in the chat box for the various groups uh, that are there. You can sign up for Cooking Around the World with Leandra Ganko. You can sign up for Hearts and Hands for Heroes with Linda File and others for some tangible ways to encourage folks in our community. And then uh, you can sign up for Jane Summers Kelly, Jane Summers Kelly's group 
even we here, which is about um, encouraging and finding positive news and sharing that with one another so that we don't get sucked into that negative cycle like I spoke about earlier. Um, also, if uh, you want to join Bible study, we have Bible study every Tuesday night. We're beginning, we're kind of kicking it off again now with the fruit of the Spirit. So if you want to be part of a more um, conversational way of getting at some of these fruit, you want to talk about what it means to love, what does love look like in our world today, who defines it, and how do we live into it, join us on Tuesday evening at 730. We'll kind of keep working through each one of the fruit of the Spirit as we go. And then there are also other groups. You can be part of our Christian Reflections on American Society group or the Conversations on Race group. There are ways to get plugged in. So we want to invite you to do that, to join in this sort of communal life on the vine that we hope you'll be part of. And our last announcement, and certainly not least, is uh, we have a, a couple items of some good news. We try to share these when they come up, if we have them, because it's always good to be reminded of good news happening in the world. So this morning we've got two. Uh, Crystal Salter, many of you know Crystal, and you saw her picture in the weekly email. She was nominated for a STAR award, award from this National Conference for Excellence in Job Training and Retention. She is awesome. You should check out and get to know Crystal if you can. She's uh, so fantastic. And then also, um, if you've been around at the Gathering Church for, I don't know, let's just say pre-pandemic, you probably know about someone named um, Mark Acuff, Mark and Libby Acuff. Mark was the founding pastor of the Gathering Church and um, has uh, he, he retired from pastoral ministry back at the end of April. And so Mark um, is living into the next phase of his ministry as he has reminded us that you don't retire from ministry. This is something we all do for our lives. And so um, he has begun a new venture of ministry. And I just put up the link to the website in our chat feature. Um, it's purpose-filled love. And so what this is, is uh, there's, for instance, a live online class that's happening. It's in four parts called Love the One You're With, and it begins September the 21st. You can go to the website, found out, find out more about what's going on there, ways to join the class, how to sign up, other things that are happening as well. Um, you, yeah, Mark and Libby are, are joyful. And I'll say this, having worked alongside Mark, um, they're still working on it, right? Which is good news. They're not coming from this high and mighty place of we figured out marriage, come hear all the answers. But they have lived a lifetime of faithfulness to one another and the joy and the love and the fruit of the spirit show up in that relationship. Um, so I encourage you to sign up for that, um, to reach out, go to the website, find out more. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Mark and Libby would certainly be happy to answer them. Okay, that's enough announcements. Thank you for being with us this morning, for worshiping with us. Now we're going to close our service as we always do by singing the doxology together so that we can go out and praise and hear a benediction and a good word. So Lee, uh, lead us in, in rejoicing in God with the doxology today. God from whom all blessings flow, raise Him all creatures here below, raise Him above the evil, raise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, raise God from Brothers and sisters, beloved friends, 
May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.